Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always, in our outstanding studio. And it's now time for Keys to the Game. Keys to the Game. There are so many keys. And this is a obviously an extremely important football game. The Bengals go to Kansas City, take on the Chiefs at Arrowhead, or as Mike Hilton once called it, Burrowhead, because... Joe Burrow had so much success out there against Patrick Mahomes. Um, but there's a bunch of keys, as there are every single week. But I think one of the biggest is they have a game wrecker, a disruptive guy by the name of Chris Jones in the uh, defensive line. He can line up anywhere. I mean, he is an interior defensive lineman technically, but they, they line him up outside on the edge. Uh, he is a disruptive pass rusher. He can play the run uh, in, in a very stout manner as well. This guy is, you know, Aaron Donald and Chris Jones. You can make arguments which one is is more effective, which one is a bigger problem. All I know is they're both great. And you have to put four hands and four eyes on Jones. There's no, no doubt about it. He is that type of player. He requires that type of attention. Now, Karloftis, uh, Dana, these guys – are good pass rushers as well. It's they've they've got four different players with five and a half sacks or more on their on their roster, and they handle it pretty well in that regard. Karloftis has nine, Jones has eight and a half, Dana has six and a half. I mean, they're they're a good group, and that's the thing about this defensive football team. They are very very solid across the board. They've got, in my mind, two elite difference makers. Chris Jones up front, and on the back end, Sneed. Now, Sneed has got a calf injury. How much will that affect him during the course of the football game? But I can tell you that this guy is a shutdown cornerback. They got McDuffie back there as well. It's, it's a, good, a good defensive football team, but you have to handle Jones. And Spags does it. Steve Bag, Spagnola does a good job of moving him around and creating one-on-one opportunities for him when he can possibly get that done. And the thing about Spags is he's got a big, big volume of fronts and uh, pressure packages and disguises and coverages and disguises to the coverages. And he's got guys that have been around for a long time. They feel comfortable with what he's doing. They believe in what he's doing. They trust him. And it's it's a good football team uh, on that defensive side of the football. As I was doing some prep work for this game, this one jumped out at me big time. you got to end every single drive with a kick punt, an extra point, or a field goal. And the Cincinnati Bengals, in last week's game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, five drives did not end with a kick. Five. I mean, that's way too many in one football game. They had three turnovers, and they had two stops on fourth down. Didn't end with a kick. And that's the biggest reason, one of the big reasons, they won lost the football game 34-11. to Cincinnati on the season with the three giveaways last week against Pittsburgh, now up to 15. Uh, They were second in the NFL with 12, but now they're fifth in the National Football League with 15 giveaways. They have nine fourth down failures. That's a total of 24 possessions that they have uh, given up without a kick. They've ended without a kick, punt, extra point, or field goal. That's 1.6 1.6 possessions per game, over a possession and a half per game. And again, five of them were in one football game against Pittsburgh. So that's like 20%, over 20% of their uh, failures in terms of turnover and fourth down stops were in that one football game. The Bengals are plus eight on the season turnover ratio, which is tied for fourth in the National Football League. That'll get it done. They, they, they just need to take care of the football and end every drive with a kick. Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are minus 10 in the turnover ratio. Tied for worse than the NFL, I think, with Arizona. I mean, (laughs) the Kansas City Chiefs, double digits, minus 10 in turnover ratio? Crazy. They have 26 giveaways on the year. Mahomes has 14 interceptions, a career high. 26 giveaways are 27th in the National Football League. They have 10 fourth down failures as well as the 26 giveaways. So they have 36 possessions that have ended without a kick. That's 12 more than the Bengals have, and that's a little under two and a half possessions a game, 
2.4 possessions a game. So that is big. If you can either take the ball away from a turnover or stop them on fourth down and don't do that at all, you have a great shot to win the football game because that's what Pittsburgh did. The Bengals five times, three turnovers, two stops on fourth down. Pittsburgh, no turnovers, no stops on fourth down. They were clean in that area. We talked about surviving the second quarter against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that didn't go very well. The Bengals had a real, real issue in the second quarter against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh had outscored the opponent dramatically in the second quarter, and the Bengals had been outscored dramatically, and that's what's going on here with the Kansas City Chiefs. Last week, the Pittsburgh Steelers outscored the Bengals 17-0 in the second quarter. They built on a 7-0 first quarter lead, 24 zip at the half. That's tough, tough sledding, tough to come back from. Get outscored 17-0 in the second quarter. Well, Kansas City has outscored the opponent 156-94 to in the second quarter. They have outscored the opponent by 62 points. The Bengals now, with the 17 points that Pittsburgh outscored them by, They've only scored 72 points and have allowed 125 in the second quarter, minus 53. That is 115 points swing <laughs> right there. Second quarter is is going to be huge, I think, in this football game. The Bengals have allowed 125 points in the second quarter. The Chiefs have scored 156 points in the second quarter. Both of those numbers are crazy. Whenever you go to Arrowhead, crowd noise is huge. It's a big, big factor. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you can't hear yourself think. I mean, the decibel readings are like a plane taken off. And once you can't hear, you can't hear. It doesn't matter. And so the Bengals are going to have to be real good with their nonverbal communication and everything that goes along with that. It makes it that much tougher when you're dealing with a, not only a solid defense in terms of schematic and personnel, but the crowd noise to boot it makes it doubly difficult. But if the Bengals can get off to a fast start, if the Bengals can score first and build on a lead, they could kind of flip that crowd against the Chiefs because this Kansas City Chiefs crowd is spoiled. I mean, they've won eight division titles in a row. Patrick Mahomes has never played a road playoff game. I mean, the, the Kansas City Chiefs uh, fan base is so used to success, they just absolutely can't handle any kind of uh, – failure. And they'll turn on the Chiefs. They'll boo them off the field. Love to see them get booed off the field at the half and at the end of the football game. And uh, so the Cincinnati Bengals, in order to get that done, they have to play with a lead. Uh, the longer you try to play catch up against the Kansas City Chiefs, the worse that crowd is going to be in terms of dealing with crowd noise. So there's Many reasons to score first, obviously. In Kansas City, one of the biggest reasons is to settle that crowd either, and then make them sit on their hands in shock and then turn them against the Kansas City Chiefs. Let the boo birds come out. Third down is going to be big. Kansas City does a good job on third down. They're fifth in the NFL converting offensively, and they're sixth in the NFL uh, preventing opponents from converting on third down. With Kansas City, you have to stay out of third and six or more. You got to do it. You know, try to keep it third and four or less. Try to stay ahead of the chains. You have to be proficient on first and second down. And the flip side of that is you have to try to get the Kansas City Chiefs into those third and long situations and then get Patrick Mahomes running around and try to control things from that point in time. Um, it's, 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 it's very simple. It, you know, you got to get off the football field on third down and you got to continue to sustain drives and stay on the football field and keep Patrick Mahomes and his explosive offense on the sideline as much as you possibly can. First and second down execution are going to be big. Stay ahead of the chains. Avoid third and long. Can't have three and outs. Can't have multiple three and outs. You know, we already talked about turnovers or the worst thing to end a drive. Fourth down stop would be second worst in a three and out. You know, third down you, you hate third down. You hate to have to punt the football away. But three and outs you hate. You are punting the football away. But at least you're kicking it and can swing field position and and maybe you know be a factor in hidden yards or whatever the case may be. But third down is going to be big in this football game. Sack differential. This one is a little bit deceiving to me because the Kansas City Chiefs have given up just 25 sacks, second fewest in the NFL. That's also second fewest 
sacks per pass attempt. They throw the ball pretty regularly, obviously. They generated 48 sacks defensively, fourth most in the NFL. That plus 23 ratio, sack ratio, is second best in the league. Now, I know Steve Spagnuolo, he's got all kinds of looks and packages and blitzes and pressures and everything else and false pressures and, and give you one look pre-snap, another look post-snap. I, I know his his ability to rush the passer is tops in the league, amongst the tops. So I can understand that number, 48. But 25 quarterback sacks is not an indication of how much pressure Patrick Mahomes has been under. Patrick Mahomes has been running around for his life. There's no question about it. Mahomes has 387 yards rushing. Um, you know, it's <laughs> and it's not designed run plays. It's all scrambles. So he's running for his life and running for first downs, or he's running, extending, creating plays, and uh, in, in making plays on that second play. You know, when first down is taken away, what's going to happen on the second play? And Patrick Mahomes is doing a good job of using his legs and his throwing arm to extend and create those. He's not got a design run package like Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, Hurts, Allen, quarterbacks of that ilk. So it is a little bit deceiving, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, their protection of their quarterback and their pressure rate is amongst the best in the National Football League at plus 23. In fact, it's second best in the National Football League. So the Bengals are going to have to compete in that area as well. There's no question the Cincinnati Bengals have been up and down this season in terms of wins and losses. You know, they've played really well against the better teams. And then in games where you think, ah, they should get this victory, it doesn't work out that way. They play the best against the better team so far this year. And we'll see if that's the case again in Kansas City. Uh, but no lapses, no lapses in this football game, physically or mentally. You have to go 100% every single snap in this game. It's, it's, it's that important. If you experience fatigue, tap out for a play or two, then work yourself back in there. Again, you have to be assignment sound, no mental errors, on point, alignment, assignment, and adjustment, all of it, the triple A, the three A. Make sure you know exactly what you're doing offensively and defensively every single snap. There's no margin for error in this football game. If a critical penalty or a turnover does occur, get over it. Don't harbor it. I think uh, that's what happened in Pittsburgh. The first turnover in the red zone, it lingered with the football team too long, and it turned into another. Compartmentalize and move on. And thats uh, I know that's easier said than done, but that, that has to happen, particularly when you're playing a good football team on the road like the Kansas City Chiefs. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.